The NC500 is the UK mainland's last wilderness, promoted by celebrity van lifers as a place to find your own secluded spot with amazing views along the rugged Scottish coastline. We sat through video after video researching the areas we would go to. We planned our nightly stopovers through apps and websites and hired a motorhome to do it in. After the first video of our trip was released here on YouTube, we received our first ever negative comment. It seemed that people like us weren't welcome in the Scottish Highlands. I'm Andy and this is my wife Claire. We toured the UK and Europe in our DIY camper van, St Christopher of Atlantis, with our dog Pablo. We are currently touring Northern Scotland on the NC500 in a rented motorhome we call Rosie. We have loved the NC500 up to now, but the trip has taken a darker turn as we become aware of a fierce battle between locals and tourists. In the first video of our trip, we parked up in a roadside lay-by along Loch Ness. We checked the app Park for Night, which suggested it to us, and also checked for any signage in the lay-by that said we couldn't park overnight. There weren't any, so we settled down for the evening. The lay-by was long, and there was only one other vehicle parked in it, which was about 50 metres away. During the night, we experienced a couple of cars that drove past at high speed, pipping their horns as they passed. We thought these were boy racers, due to the speed they were driving and the fact that we thought they were attempting to wake us up. In our first ever negative comment, we were told that we could not wild camp in Scotland in a motorhome. We were given extracts from the Road Traffic Act. Luckily for us, we were parked in a public lay-by where you are allowed to rest provided that everything is contained in the vehicle. Unfortunately, we noticed that Claire had trapped her skirt in the door, so we are currently scouring Facebook groups for photo evidence of our illegal park-up. Joking aside, we did use the levellers for the motorhome, which we didn't realise falls under this rule, so we won't be doing that again. We were told that some locals consider us freeloaders, which is why we were being pipped at at 2 in the morning whilst driving at very high speeds down a single track road. The phrase lead by example came to mind, so we had two choices. Should we spend the following nights driving dangerously and polluting the environment with our noisy horn, or simply visit the campsites that we had booked whilst using the local amenities that we had planned to spend money in. We decided to leave the beautiful, clean and very friendly Shieldag campsite for Bunray Caravan and Motorhome Club site. We got into conversation with the lady that left the original comment. I'm a firm believer that if you listen to someone with a different opinion to yourself, you just might learn something. She said that there is no way of us knowing that the horn pippers were boy racers as opposed to objectors, as it was a common occurrence all over the Highlands. She advised us not to rely on park for night, as many of the places that are suggested are in fact illegal, and local residents and councils are fighting to have them removed. We thanked her for her advice and told her that we were only staying in campsites for the rest of our trip, which she said she was pleased with and that we would be much more comfortable. We were really grateful for the advice, and although we were startled by her first comment, she seemed to have our best interests at heart. We would be extra careful to be respectful to the locals, as we wanted to be responsible visitors. By this time we had released our video, Did We Find Freedom on the NC500 and Escape Modern Life? We received a comment that said, You might have found peace and freedom from modern life before the NC500 Limited made up a route and promoted it endlessly without consulting the residents of the Highlands. This promotion has destroyed that, sadly. There was obviously a lot more to this than we first thought. So what exactly is the NC500? Well, Andy, the NC500, or North Coast 500 if you want the full name, was launched in 2015 and covers 516 miles of the North Scottish coastland starting and ending at Inverness Castle. It was started by the Tourism Project Board of the North Highland Initiative to benefit tourism businesses along the route. The initiative was supported by Visit Scotland and the Highlands and Islands Enterprise. The first year of the launch led to 29,000 more people visiting the area who spent £9 million. This all sounds like a great success, but it does have its 
downsides. The opening of the route drew controversy due to the Scottish Government adopting strong positions on climate change and renewable energy, yet promoting driving 500 miles in petrol and diesel cars around the north of Scotland. Traffic has increased since opening with reports of problems on local roads. The main gripes are not pulling over to let others overtake, driving in convoys, excessive wear to roads, speeding and slow driving. Journey times are said to be three times longer in peak season. With the staycation movement due to the COVID-19 lockdowns, local residents began to be more vocal on social media about the impact of dirty camping, where visitors would empty their toilets, leave their litter, start fires and drive over delicate environments. Since then, various social media groups have started gathering evidence of any perceived wrongdoing to present to the powers that be in order to prevent the situation getting worse. In 2018, it was reported that tax was scattered across the NC500, although it was never linked to any person or group. We didn't know anything about any of this when we booked our trip, so we decided to spend some money to support the local economy by visiting Glen Shield Cafe in Kyle. You like his working puppies? Hello. Got two coffees. Mm-hmm. We've got two cakes each. Well, two cakes, sure. One's a paradise slice. Mm. What is a paradise slice? No, but you have it by the dash And then that's a flapjack. Yeah, all right, it's all fun, then. You having it now? Yeah. Back on the road and the traffic was getting busier. I think it's fair to say that traffic everywhere is busier. We can only assume that this is typical of the summer school holidays in August, which is supposed to be the busiest time of the year. We come from Barnsley, which used to be a small town supporting the surrounding villages that consisted of farms and mines. I remember walking down country lanes as a child with no traffic, playing football in the middle of the road and shouting CAR every so often when a car did come past. This is my commute to work now. I wish that everyone would just get off the road so that I could go about my business. The guy behind is probably thinking the same about me. The only snag is that some of this traffic is on its way to frequent my business. Without the traffic, I'd have no income. Digging further into the social media groups, it soon became apparent that all types of personality were represented within them. Like any gathering of people, the opinions varied. Some posters were very businesslike, some were very passionate about the environment, and some were, mm, how can I say it, threatening violence. Were we not welcome here? Was merely the sight of the white motorhome we hired enough for people to tell us to leave? It was time to park the motorhome up in our campsite for the night. Oh, Claire, where are we now? We're at Bunry Campsite, Camping and Motorhome Club Campsite. Yeah, caravan and motorhome club site. And we've got this pitch. Managed to get the uh, old Zafiro. Number seven. Just in. But this is our view from the front. It's quite spectacular, really. Getting pretty good at parking this bad boy. We're plot seven, near the toilets. And we're gonna have a walk into Whatever, the really. <laughs> little towny bit. It's a great site though. This is really good. We've got a toilet block over there. Yeah, fishman's been. Fishman's there. Let's have a walk down to, what's it called? Rome West. Rome West. We're gonna go to Rome West and apparently they do really nice food and I think we could do a nice little meal. That would be good, yeah. Just look at that, Claire. Yeah, it's gorgeous. The little... Uh, no, Eldis. Eldis. <laughs> Odyssey. Beautiful. Beautiful caravan. <laughs> I mean, look, they're like eating the plants. The day before we filmed this video, Andy tore his calf trying to hike up to the bone caves. Slowly but surely wins the race. We're not in a rush. We're not, good job. We've got to be home for Friday. <laughs> Andrew, you're looking great today. You've got all your waterproofs on. <laughs> Which is very, very unfashionable. No, it's not. <laughs> you're walking like you've, you've hurt your calf. Why do you have to move your hands like that? <laughs> <laughs> Tell you why. Because there's like, I've got, a, I've got a small like area that I can work with. Yeah. And I think what happens if I move my hands, it lets me know where I am in it. <laughs> if I don't move my hands, then I go too far and it pulls. Yeah. Everyone's an expert. Have you ever torn your calf muscle, Claire? No. Right, there you go. That's why you don't know. I don't know. It feels good as well. I might just walk like this anyway. So this is a shared drive. Quite interesting. Yep. 
So the Caravan and Motorhome Club share this with people that live here. It's a shame that you live in wilderness. We've got to put cones out and stuff to stop people parking. I'm just shocked that people think it's acceptable to park on your drive. There's some smell that's absolutely sending him yeah. crazy. It might Could, be, like you say, cows. Must be, yeah. He's never really been around cows before. No, he's lucky. Get here <laughs> if you can. This is a good advert for Bunry. Good for people with injured uh, calves. Bit of a fast road. Good job we're not more dackered. You look it walking like that. Might try a bigger stride. Like what are you this. trying? That works. Yeah? That one's okay. You look cool when you do that too. But, ah, I thought my parking were good. That's, That's amazing. That's good work, yeah, how they've got that up there. It's amazing caravan parking. Hopefully, they're dog friendly. I'm more worried about them letting you in, to be honest. It was time to give back to the local community, so we bought two pints from a really nice Welsh guy called Ben before ordering our meal from a lovely girl from Plymouth. We chose the venison pie. Although we'd made a good start with our responsible travel ethos, we wanted to go further in supporting the local economy. That is why instead of buying some cheesy Highland toffee, we went for the more unusual choice of buying Scottish whisky. We chose a flight of three local whiskies and we couldn't wait to taste them, even though Claire said... Don't like whiskey. No, no. Had Namur Chant. That's like nice. called Nukneen. I don't like that one at all. Ben Nevis. I don't like that one at all. Pears and pears. Oh, that's it. Pears and pears. There's a hint of seaweed down there. I don't know. It just smells of seaweed with a smoky edge. It's called a magnine. It's called a magnine. It's called a magnine. What does it smell like? It's got a hint of vanilla and ginger. Like Ben Nevis. I said, well, let's just do this. It's going to be a camper van go to Scotland. I said, no, 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 camper van. I mean, like a big bloody well to home. That is gorgeous. That's so smooth. So that was Rome West. Yep, the pub restaurant. I thought the found. staff were really friendly. Yeah, we met a lot of friends in there, didn't we? Yeah. Lots of people from loads of places. Please keep out. We're going after the car. <laughs> Hilario. Not all disabilities are visible, but yours is. <laughs> you alright, darling? How's your, how's your calf? Oh, thanks for asking. We have to say that the locals in all the pubs, campsites, cafes, bars were amazing and made us feel very welcome at all times. Whenever someone was at the back of us, we pulled in at the very first passing place we came to. And the drivers would blink their hazards to say thank you. People were genuinely interested in where we had come from and where we were going, giving us tips along the way. But what about all the comments on social media about people like us freeloading and ruining the environment? We began to understand that as long as we respected the local community, the people that live around the NC500 were very welcoming to us. Reading between the lines, even the harshest comments on social media were simply asking us to both think a little more carefully about what we were doing. Which is why we were surprised when we were sent lines from the Scottish Access Code on our Freedom video from another person. We can only assume that someone saw the title and made the assumption that we were freeloading. For the record, we stayed in a campsite in that video and every other video in Scotland apart from the first. Despite this comment, we still felt welcome and put it down to a possible bad day at the office. Times are changing for all of us. The cost of living, inflation, increased population, more traffic, more restrictions, more taxes. Things always change, whether that be in our beloved Yorkshire or the beautiful country of Scotland. As we looked across to Clovolin, we both reflected on the journey that we'd taken. In a way, the NC500 reminded us of the 80s when things were quieter for us too. We can't speak for other visitors or other residents of the Highlands, that isn't our place, but we can make positive decisions ourselves to become more responsible tourists. Even with the best intentions, we can still cause damage without even trying. 
Standing here with the sun setting, it reminded me of the simpler days of my youth, standing with my dad on the beach, skimming pebbles across the sea, when the only thing that I could possibly break were the gentle waves lapping the shore. Skim this. 